Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call the pixel glitch effect. All right, I received an email from a company that makes effects and they had a certain effect and I went and looked at it and thought, well, this is kind of cool. Can I do this just with Premiere Pro was what I was wondering with the built-in effects and maybe masks? The answer is I came pretty close. Let's have a look at my example. I'll show you several different ways that I, I, I created this effect. And if it, it, well, let's have a look and then I'll break it all down. All right, so it, it's a glitchy effect in pixels and it's only affecting what I want to. So I've got two different ways of doing this. One is with masks and I'll be the first to admit that masks in Premiere Pro are not very easy. But the good thing with this effect is you don't have to be perfect. You can be very ragged with your selection. I also wanted to look at a different way. Instead of masks, what about with shapes, just general shapes? And that was the first one. It was actually a different way of doing it. If you look in the timeline, you can see I've got the video clip here, a copy of the clip above it with the effect, and above that, I've got an essential graphic shape. And this shape is just an essential graphics shape. It's one of the shapes that are, are as part of the, the essential graphics. And I just moved it a little bit, each one. This one didn't move. And, I, and they're, they're basically, instead of a mask, you just create a shape. And with the copy of the clip, I've got the effect, which we'll look at in a second, but I also have the track matte key set to video three matte alpha. What that means is instead of a mask, it uses a matte and that is the shape and the shape up top. So if you find this easier, an easier way to work with things, great. Um, if you prefer working with masks, we'll look at that in a second. So with the effect on the clip above, I've cut it to these places where I need it. So it's enabled there, it's disabled where it's dark. So that's where the effect is and it's isolated by the essential graphics shape, which is defined by the track mat key. Now, if I turn off the track mat key and then turn off the essential graphics shapes, you actually see the whole effect on the whole frame. That's why I need to isolate it. So that's the way that that works. Now let's look at an example with a mask. And this one also has a transform effect on it. So if we look down at the bottom, I've got transform where I'm changing the position and scale. So I'm, I'm jerking the frame around as if the glitch effect is affecting everything. It's just a different way to do it. I wasn't as careful as I should be because you'll see some black edges in there, but hey, I was just having some fun. Um, okay, so that's the transform. And with this effect, the mask is going from from zero to 100, and then from 100 down to zero. So you can see the effect just in these areas. So the effect is happening here and happening in here. And the, the only animation property that is changing is this distortion evolution. If I don't have this, so if I turn these, these keyframes off, then you, you just see the distortion itself, but you don't see it animate. So having that 
distortion change. And I just randomize these numbers. I just move them around a little bit. I don't really care what they are. I also have this complexity that I can play with. Because if you don't change the complexity, let me just make sure I've got a full size here that I can work with. If you have the complexity too low, then the effect is going to look chunkier. If you make the complexity higher, then it's more of a pixel type effect. If it's chunkier, then it's more of a, a different stylized effect. And then I added all these uh, sound effects in there, so that's the kind of effect it is. All right, now the next one is pretty much the same. Uh, oh yeah, let's go back and, and look at the mask. So I just drew a mask around this area in the, and this is the VR digital glitch. I should have shown you that. If you look, search for digital, it's the digital glitch. That's the effect. You, you're supposed to use this only for VR, but I can use it for anything I want. And the mask, I just drew around that area. And you see, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. And if I just delete that mask, of course, you see the effect everywhere. So I can temporarily turn that off and grab the pen tool and just draw around this area of where I want that to be. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Adobe made drawing these masks uh, much easier. There was an update that uh, just makes it a little bit easier to edit these. And then when you're finished, make sure you go over the first one to close that path uh, and then feather that path a little bit. Turn the effect on and there we go. Okay. And for her, the mask is just a large oval. It's the oval mask that I added here. And it's got a feather. So it's around her head. And again, on this one, I am changing the master amplitude and the digital evolution. Or sorry, the distortion evolution. And if we reset all of this, All right, so let me apply it. And it doesn't really look what I, what I just had, so I'll twirl down distortion and turn up the distortion rate. This is the thing that makes it really work. And you can change the overall scale of all of this. So you can stretch things up, really mess around with this, change the complexity, and you're animating the, the digital distortion evolution. So now when I grab that, oval and drag it out, then I've got that effect. And then I just have to set keyframes for the mask opacity. So it's 100% and it's 0%. So that's how you introduce the effect. So it looks like a pixel effect. But if you notice the, the woman with headphones, it didn't look like pixels. It was more of a stylistic effect. So let's go have a look at that one. She happened to be in the center and I thought this was pretty cool. And if we look at just the edited keyframes, so that I'm changing the geometry distortion and the complexity is down to one. That's why it looks the way it does. And again, I'm just changing the distortion evolution. The rate is still up pr pretty high, but because it's, it's very, 
low complexity, it has that kind of effect where you can almost see, you still see her, fe her features. All right. Now, the last one was the hardest one because we've got a moving object. So for this one, I had to edit the mask. And you'll see all of the keyframes for the mask, and that's the mask path. So you click on here, draw your mask, move ahead. You don't have to go every frame. See, I, I haven't edited every frame. Again, you've got some looseness that you can work with here. And then when the effect is gone, when the mask goes back to zero opacity, then I don't have to change it until I want the effect again. And then I moved the points and changed that around. And it looks like that. And you're probably wondering, well, why doesn't Premiere Pro just track him? Well, Premiere Pro is not a visual effects program, although I am doing a certain level of simplistic visual effects right now. The tracker is not made for that kind of rotoscoping. And what you're looking for is rotoscoping. If you want rotoscoping, uh, go to After Effects and look for Mocha AE. Mocha is part of After Effects. It's a bit of a learning curve, but if you want the best tracking, the uh, best rotoscoping, it's that. You can also try the new Roto Brush effect in After Effects. But I, again, I wanted to make this really simple in Premiere Pro. It's one uh, glitch effect. It's some shapes, some masks. Sometimes you have to animate the masks and it cre can create a pretty compelling effect. Hey, if you're new to video revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. Thanks to all of our wonderful donors. We do appreciate everything you do for us and everyone that supports us. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to go look at effects that you have to pay for and see if we can do an equivalent version right inside Adobe Premiere Pro.